What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel and today we are back with another monthly Q&A, this one obviously being for April. Now if you guys do want to ask your own questions then I will leave a link to the Discord down in the description. Moving forward all of the questions in these videos are going to be from the Discord and we have got I think six or seven questions from the Discord today. So without wasting any more time guys let's get stuck right into the questions. So the first question we have here is from my good friend Simon who says are you excited for Bad Batch and if so what are your hopes and expectations for it? Well firstly I am definitely very excited. By the time you guys are watching this, I'm actually sort of pre-recording this, but uh, by the time you guys watch this video, it's probably only like a week and a half away, I think. So not far away at all, and I am definitely very, very excited for it. Uh, in terms of my hopes, uh, really the only thing that I hope, which I'm not going to be fussed either way, but I do hope that it doesn't follow the, the Clone Wars like sort of structure where it was, I guess, in story arcs rather than you know a, a story from start to finish. Like I said, I'm not really opposed to that. If they go that way, then it's not going to be the end of the world. But I really do hope that it, it actually goes from, you know, episode one starts the story and then through the whole series, whether it's one season or multiple seasons, we don't really know yet. I do hope that it just tells like a continual story rather than, you know, separate little arcs just because I think, I don't know, I just prefer my shows to be that way where you're actually invested in the story along the way. But yeah, in saying that, I, I obviously love the Clone Wars and yeah, they did it that way. So it's not really the end of the world if it is that way. But yeah, if it was my choice, I would definitely hope for more of a through line through the story, something similar to Rebels where it tells the story from, you know, episode one and then by season four, the last episode, we sort of get that same story the whole way through. The next question comes from Sam the Man who says, what's your favorite memory from your YouTube career? To be honest, I don't even have to think about this one. The, uh, the Game Changer invitation was still to this day, I find that pretty crazy. Uh, that was definitely the the best memory I've got from uh, from YouTube so far. I remember just waking up one morning, I think it was literally the day after Squadrons had either been announced or maybe the day after the trailer, I can't remember, but I just remember waking up and I had an email from uh, Jay Ingram, who is the, the community manager. And yeah, I, th I thought it was fake at first. I was like, what the hell, why would he be emailing me? And then I read it and I literally like flipped out. I was just sitting on the bed, like freaking out, like what the fuck, what is going on here? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just, for me, it was like a real, like uh, almost a validation of uh, all the hard work that I've put in. Getting recognized from, you know, industry professionals, the people that I'm they're, I'm playing their game and they're, they're acknowledging me and saying like, we want to work with you, we want to be able to get your feedback and, and all that type of stuff. That, yeah, that was absolutely crazy to me. And it still is. I haven't really had enough experience with the game changers yet to have had it like fully sink in. I've only really played Squadron. We played Squadrons early a couple of times and then we've had like some of the news break about, you know, a few hours earlier. Um, but other than that, I haven't really had an experience. I haven't been able to, to travel, obviously, the pandemic and everything going on. So I know that like one day, if I'm lucky enough to be flown to America to play the games and shit, that is when it will really sink in. Right now, it hasn't really sunk in. But yeah, even still, that is without a doubt my favorite memory so far. The next question we have is from Jay Diesel, who says, what other Star Wars YouTubers do you think are the best in the community? Uh, the two that I'm going to pick, I would obviously love to just pick more than two. And pretty much everyone that I've mentioned in the, the little shout out video at the start of the year obviously all of those guys I look up to those guys and you know respect them very highly but the two that I think are just miles above everyone else is cinematic captures and wolf of wolf cinematic captures is literally like I don't even know if you can define him as a youtuber like he he's literally just a film director he that dude is on another level um, the, the amount of like passion and work that he puts into his work is yeah it's on another level and mark my words the guy will direct movies one day like he's on a he's on a course for yeah for great things and then woof 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 that dude is one of those few people uh that is on youtube that has a big following that truly does deserve it he's such a nice like happy friendly person i've only ever had great discussions with him every time we've talked he's always just such a nice guy but not only that but the the quality of what he does and especially now he's also moving into that like virtual production type of stuff um, but even before that like just the content he was making he really does put in a lot of effort and it's also very different content it's not just regular like gaming videos the type of stuff that i do he does like you know a lot higher quality uh more unique type of content and i think yeah definitely those two are the two that in the star wars gaming i guess you would call i don't even know if you would call those guys star wars gaming youtubers but they're definitely like slightly in that category and I think they're yeah miles ahead of everyone else in the whole community to be honest. 
The next question we have is from Auraforce who says, what do you think about some of your first videos? And then in brackets, how much do you cringe? Uh, why cringe more than you could possibly imagine? Those like early videos, I, I literally cannot watch them. Like they, they actually make me want to cry watching those. So <laughs> yeah, definitely not a fan of watching them, but uh, in terms of what I think of them, I think the only thing I can really take away from them is just, uh, you know, being happy with how far I've come since then. Obviously, you know, back then I was happy enough to upload them and I thought they were really high quality, but then looking at them now, they're, they're obviously not. And so I guess it does just motivate me to think, you know, the, the videos I'm uploading now, I think these are decent enough quality. And then I'm sure in a few years, I'll probably look back at these and be like, wow, they, they're terrible. So uh, yeah, if anything, it just, it just motivates me to, you know, keep trying to improve. And yet, I think everyone always thinks that what they're doing at the moment is kind of the best they can do. But yeah, I, I, I hope to always improve. And yeah, hopefully um, in a few years, I can look back at this video and think, wow, this is absolutely grim. The next question comes from Gavin who says, favorite place you've ever traveled to and why? Now, this is kind of a tough one because I've actually never left Australia. Um, I have traveled most of Australia, but I've actually never left the country. Sounds probably pretty crazy to a lot of you guys, because especially like guys in Europe, for example, you can literally drive like a couple hours and be in a different country. But in Australia, it's so it's such a big place and it's so far away from everywhere that it's really expensive actually to go overseas. So you'll probably find a lot of Aussies that are, yeah, they've, they've never been overseas or maybe like once. So I'm one of the unfortunate few that have not been overseas. I was actually robbed last year of two overseas trips uh, due to the pandemic. That was the year that I was going to finally pop the cherry and uh, yeah, it unfortunately didn't happen. Um, but in terms of inside of Australia, the favorite place I've ever traveled to, uh, probably the Gold Coast up in Queensland. Um, went to Surfers Paradise for schoolies, which is... Pen, it's kind of like uh, spring break, I guess, if you're in America. Um, when you finish school, everyone has a huge party for a week, pretty much. And we went, yeah, to the whole other side of the country and just got absolutely blind with my mates for a whole week. Uh, and yeah, that's probably not only because of that, obviously some great memories there and stuff, but it is just a really nice place to visit. Um, I had actually been there before we went on school as well. And yeah, it's, just, it's like the tourist destination in Australia. It's like a really, really nice place to go. So mostly uh, the Gold Coast, just because of the you know the memories i've got there some of the best days of my entire life were spent on the gold coast but yeah, it's also just a really really nice place to go the next question is from aunt f who says how much time per day do you spend envious of wavy's beard now wavy's beard is quite godly to be honest uh, i compare it to someone like thor it is uh it's just out of this world uh how much time per day at least 25 hours per day now, last but not least, we have a question from Star Wars Boy who says, with the anniversary of Battlefront 2's final update coming up, how much longer do you think the game will last before people lose interest? This is kind of a tough one to answer because honestly, I would have thought people would have lost interest by now, but obviously, you know, things pop up like the, the free promotion on Epic Game Store and stuff like that. And the other fact is it's just Star Wars. So people will probably always be playing it. And I know for a fact people will be playing this in 10 years. But in terms of like when the, the you know, overall player base in terms of the majority of people will lose interest. I think it kind of depends on what happens in the next year or so. I think if, let's just say, Battlefront 3 got announced at EA Play this year or or sometime soon, even in the next year or something, uh, if we knew that a Battlefront 3 was on its way, I think people will kind of always stick around playing the game. But if we don't hear anything about that and then there's a lot of other Star Wars games coming out and then there's also, you know, other games like there's always Call of Duty every year and there's all the Battlefield 6 coming this year and stuff like that. I think eventually, like, people kind of get dragged away a little bit for example a lot of us you know guys like myself i still play battlefront you know every now and then but i've kind of moved away to call of duty and then i'll move to, to battlefield when that comes out oh, i think yeah i think if we don't hear any news of a battlefront 3 for a long time then unfortunately people will start to lose interest but like i said i, I think people will be playing you know people still to this day play battlefront 2 2005 so i think it'll be a long time till it's like actually dead but in terms of like i kind of know what you're trying to get at the, the general play base the majority of players um yeah i think it kind of just depends on whether they do or don't announce battlefront 3 and whether that's anytime soon but i think if that got announced i think i know for myself i'd be playing battlefront until that came out to be honest because i think knowing that there's a new one coming and then having the game there you would want to play it um, but yeah, I think right now, because we don't know if that's coming, I think it's 
yeah, you, you kind of feel like, ah, should I even bother, you know, sticking with the game kind of thing? But yeah, if, if that got announced, I think a lot of people would stick with it till the very end, pretty much. But that is going to do it for the questions in this month's Q&A. Boys and girls, thank you all very much for tuning in. Like I said, if you do want to ask your very own questions, then feel free to join the Discord. There is a link down in the description. Not only is it a great place to ask questions, but it's just a great place to hang out with the rest of the community. We have a lot of fun in there. And uh, yeah, feel free to join if you would like. But that is going to wrap this one up. Thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and I'll catch you all in the next one. Crush them. Make them suffer.